quartering wind right now if I'm facing downrange that's coming back from about 7.30 toward me right now. You have a clock system that you use when you're thinking wind. are always at 12 o'clock. Behind you is always at 6 o'clock. Any wind that comes in directly from 3 o'clock or directly from 9 o'clock is known as a full value wind. Say it. Full, full value, value wind. wind. Right now, I've got a quartering wind that's coming in. This wind's coming in from this direction down here around 7.30, the condition that we're in right now. Say, for example, if I figured out that I was at the 600-yard line and I had a wind that was coming directly in from 9 o'clock, and I told myself that that value, I think, is worth 8 clicks left. So I put 8 clicks left on, and I shoot, and I got an X. And I go, man, I am a wind-reading bad man. And I'm good to go, because I'm shooting in a full-value wind, right? with eight clicks left. And all of a sudden, I'm laying up there and I look up at that windsock, and that windsock's not blowing right straight across the range. That windsock's blowing laterally, showing that I got the wind coming in down here from seven o'clock. If I had eight clicks on over here, and my wind switched all the way around and came from this direction, what do you, about how many clicks do you think I would need there? Probably about half of it, right? That's why I probably shoot about four clicks down here. Wind shows, the flags show the direction of the wind. And when you see that, what do you think it starts doing? It builds confidence in you as an individual. You start going, I think I can do this. I think I can learn to read wind. I, I can sense the direction. How many of you see shooters pick up grass and go like that? They're looking at the direction. There. You think Marines can do that tactically? You bet your ass they can. You think a Marine sniper can look through a scope and see Mirage and take that scope slightly out of adjustment and start to see Mirage and tell the direction? Yes. Where do you think a Marine sniper learns that? In Fallujah? <laughs> no. He learns it on the rifle range at Quantico and Camp Lejeune and Edison Range. That's exactly where they're trained. They get out there and they learn to read wind using range flags. Now, to use a telescope, which is your most accurate or the most valuable piece of gear you can use to read wind, is you focus that scope in clearly on your target, and then you rotate the eyepiece or your focus knob one quarter turn to the left, which makes the scope slightly out of focus. So when you make it perfectly clear, can't see much mirage unless it's really hot. Sometimes on days you can see mirage with the naked eye. But on some days when you can't see the mirage very clearly, you focus your scope one quarter turn to the left and it makes the mirage more apparent or more distinct. And suddenly you start seeing these squiggly lines, right? And how many of you see them squiggly lines going like this and you have absolutely no earthly idea what it really is? Right? You're trying to figure out, I don't know what, how much that's worth. I can see the mirage, but I really don't know. Well, think of it like this. You look through the scope and you see mirage going like this. Okay? You look at the flag and you say, well, I think I need six clicks right. And the mirage going like that. You put six clicks on the gun and you shoot and you're on the right. So you go one more click, and you shoot again, and the mirage is still going like this. You've got seven clicks on the gun. The mirage is going like that, and you're in the center. And you can see that condition. So you roll over and you shoot again. The next time you look in the scope, it's going like this. What does that mean? It was going like this, but now it's going like this. It picked up a little bit, didn't it? You look at the flag, and you see it's nearly the same direction you say 
oh shit, I might not be center there, I might be, and you look back and this target comes up and yes, you caught a 10. It picked up a little bit. So you put one more click on, you know in your mind, now I got eight clicks on. You look in your scope and you go, yes, it looks about the same, it's going fast again. You roll over and you shoot, and you look back in your scope, and it's still going fast. The target goes down and comes up and you got an X. What do you think you're doing? You are reading wind. How many of you blindly just shoot a shot and then write in your data book, and then pick up a round? And then you look back in the scope and wonder where you're at, and you look at the mirage, you're not really sure, you're just hoping that you're gonna catch a 10. And then if you got a shot on the left, you just make one right. If you got a shot on the right, you go one left. You're really just virtually chasing the bull. But I'll tell you this, if you make a conscious effort to learn to try to read when, you get up there, you know, it used to be, you just walk over and ask Joe Hendricks what he had on, right? You walk up and say, Joe, what'd you have on at three rapid? And he goes, six right. And you go, thanks, man. You walk back over and you put six right on. You lay down and you shoot your string. You're out in the middle of the nine ring. You walk back and say, damn, Joe. I shot with six right and I was out in the middle of the nine ring. And Joe says, yeah, so was I. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't always count on asking the other person. You've got to learn to read wind for yourself. So you get up there, you look at the angle of the flag. You make a determination on how many clicks you start thinking that you need on there. You can use Champion windage charts. How many have ever seen windage charts that shows the miles per hour or velocity of the wind? It says you got a 15 mile per hour wind that's coming in from one o'clock. 15 mile per hour wind from one o'clock is approximately four clicks right. You can use those. Then you put four clicks right on. But the first thing you do is you look at the mirage. And you say, I'm gonna to try to remember what I see. And it's going like that. I use my windage chart and I put four right on, and I roll over and shoot. As soon as I shoot, I look back in the scope and I say, is it the same or has it changed? Say it. Is, is it, it the, the same, same or has, has it changed? changed? And I look at my scope and I see it's the same. I'm good to go. The target comes down and I got feedback. Is four enough? Nope, I need one more right. I got five on the gun. I look in the scope. All together, is, is it, it the same, same or has, has it changed? changed? Looks the same. I roll over and shoot with five. Bang! As soon as I shoot, I look back in the scope. What do I say? Is this the same or has it changed? It's changed, hasn't it? It's picked up a little bit. I say, okay, I'm in the center right now, but it's picked up a little bit. I'm going to put one more on. Now I got six on. You always have that figure in your head. How many times have you seen a shooter writing in his data book, two right, one right, three right, one left, and they're writing all that stuff down? What the hell does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. That's a paper drill, what they're doing. But a good shooter knows what he has on that gun for when during the entire string. If you can't remember it, I think you should probably take some kind of supplement. But if you, can't, if you can't remember, you can write in your data book. But usually you know what that figure is during your entire string, whether it's a rapid-fire string or whether it's a 600-yard string. You know how many clicks wind you have on that gun, whether you're a shooter or whether you're sitting in the scope coaching. You're thinking of that figure that you have, and your first thing you do after your string of fire is you say, I had seven clicks right wind on the gun. First thing I do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left, and make sure I went back to my true zero. I count that zero off. If your zero is five up and two right, you go two left to make sure your mark on your windage drum that you made with a piece of uh, with a, a paint pen or fingernail polish lines up, and you confirm that true zero. So a shooter that looks in the scope each and every time after he shoots. That right there is going to be worth five to eight points in your 600 yard string. And you Marines that are up there shooting blind and soldiers that are just shooting blind and you're not going all together, is it the same or has it changed? And you're actively trying to read that wind. If you're not, you'll never learn. 
But after a while, you'll become an experienced wind reader. And you'll be like Gary Hendricks. Gary Hendricks is 97 years old. And he can walk right up there and sit in a scope and just turn the eyepiece and he'll go, I think we got six minutes blowing. You're like, is it that much? He'll go, yeah. Because he's been looking at it for, what is it, 68 years on the rifle range. So, I mean, that's how you learn to read wind. All right. I'm way behind. I want to go down to the 200 yard line. I want everybody to bring all their gear. And I want you to be there in 12 minutes.